One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day, Mogatin and Renanim. Welcome to the One Micronesia podcast. Another week, another show, and another amazing Micronesian to feature. Um, I feature so many uh, amazing, hardworking Micronesians on the show. And it's it's really to pretty much encourage other Micronesians to do good, to get back to the community, uh, serve their community uh, the best way possible. And uh, on the podcast today, um, it's 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 amazing. I saw her. I saw one of my friends uh, repost a, a post of her graduation pic, and I was like, man, I have to get her on here. So here on the podcast with me, ladies and gentlemen, I do have Doctor Harmony Yomai. Even though she told me not to call her doctor, but she did. She, she honestly deserves. She worked hard for that title. So on the podcast with me again, Dr. Harmony Yomai. Uh, Harmony, thank you so much and welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. I mean, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about your journey. I think that's that's what today's interview is about is to to feature you and 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 go down the line and talk about the the things that you had to go through the struggles. I know there was a lot to, to get to where you're at your accomplishments. So, uh, so. Let's start with getting to know you. Uh, people, out, you have so many friends, but for those out there watching the podcast right now, let, let's get to know you just a little bit. Uh, tell us more about Harmony Yomai. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so my name is Harmony. Harmony. Um, I'm from the islands of Chuk and um, Yap, outer islands of Yap. Um, I was born and raised in Chuk. I went to St. Cecilia Elementary School, then to Xavier High School. I graduated in 2011. Then um, after that, I moved to Hawaii to pursue my bachelor's degree, lived there. I went to Chaminade University. Um, after I graduated, I moved to Tennessee to pursue my PhD. And I just graduated last month. And now I'm just kind of um, taking a break and applying to jobs. Wow. That's awesome. And like I said, you just briefly in a couple of seconds just kind of went through your whole journey, which is awesome. We're going to we're going to kind of slow down just a little bit and break it down. Uh, but let's mm-hmm. go back to, uh, you know, St. Cecilia. I, I, I remember uh, I was go- I was going to Saver High School and I do remember you um, going to St. Cecilia uh, and uh, you and your sister. Uh, she has a twin, ladies and gentlemen. So um, so I do remember uh, you guys going to St. Cecilia and then I graduated 2007 uh, and then later on found out that you guys went to Saver High School as well. That's awesome. So let's talk about your experiences at um, on top of Mabuchi Hill. Oh, yeah, Mabuji Hill. So, yes, yeah, so you gra- you graduated in 2007 from Savior. That's when I graduated from St. Cecilia. So I went to Savior, like, right after you graduated. Um, so, I mean, at first I didn't want to go to Savior because all of my friends were going to Sarah. Mm-hmm. But um, my parents were like, absolutely not, you're going to Savior. But um, I'm really glad I did because I think a lot about it. I'm like, man, um, I think... It's really good that I went to Xavier because I got to meet so many different people from so many different cultures. And, you know, like going to um, Hawaii or working in Ponte, you meet other people, other Micronesians. And you kind of, when you're from, when you come from Obuji Hills, like it's a little different. You have something to connect on. It makes it more easier, I think. Yeah, and and I think definitely. I think I think that's what helped me too. That's what helped me on my journey. It is going to Savior. It made me. It made it made me. Uh, it made it made me. It opened my uh, my mind and to to the different things to, and how to interact with different cultures or different people from different cultures and stuff like that. So I think you know I think Savior High School, like you said, pl- played a big part in your life. Played a big part in my life too. So oh, that's that's awesome. Uh, you know, and you made so many friends. I think that's one of the best things about you know going to Savior High School is the friends that you make over the years from different islands. And, you know, after graduating, you're still in contact with them. And like you said, you went to Hawaii and I'm pretty sure that's like one of the number one destinations for Saver high school students or for, for Saverites who graduate. So um, that's awesome. Um, You know, so a little girl grew up in Chook, uh, you know, went to school to Chook, graduated from Saver high school. And then, you know, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about Chaminade, why you chose Chaminade and then your experiences as uh, a Micronesian in Shamanet and also in Hawaii. So we'll t- take a break and we'll come back and talk about that. You're watching the One Micronesia podcast being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. It is better together. Need a new phone? 
trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Hey, Mogasin and Zananyam. We're back here. One Micronesia podcast. We're talking with Dr. Harmony. Yo, my um, Harmony, we talked about, we, we learned about you for just a little bit. We learned you went to St. Cecilia, Saver High School, how Saver High School played a big part in, in, in changing your perspective of the world and the, the cultures of Micronesia and how to interact and make friends and stuff like that. And then you graduated and then you went to the number one spot, uh, the number one pretty much destination for all uh, Saverites. Um, let's talk about it. Hawaii. Um, you continued your education. Why Shamanad? Uh, so, uh, like you mentioned earlier, I have a twin sister, and my Shamanad was the only university that we both applied to. Um, and so, our parents were like, "You are not going to be se- separated. Your first year away from home, you have to be together." So we're like, "Okay." And they told us we could like move to different states or countries wherever we want after that one year. And then that one year came. Oh my gosh, the first semester, I was a huge mess. I was cried almost every night. My sister would like come knocking on the door, like, stop crying, get to bed. <laughs> like, um, so I honestly don't know how I would have survived if I had gone somewhere else without her. She was definitely my rock in a way. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And so let's talk about it. You went, so let's, after the first week, first year, now you're over it. Now you're like, okay, th- this is big girl harmony. I'm going to take care of business. Uh, so you went into uh, environmental studies. Was that your first, uh, was that your first, um, was that the major you wanted or, or did you try other things and then go into environmental studies? Yeah. So I actually uh, started off as undecided because I didn't, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go into the sciences, but I wasn't, I didn't know if I wanted to go the research route or the medical route. Uh, route. And um, I took my time trying to figure that out. And after taking um, some classes, I realized that I was actually more interested in the um, conservation and natural resources side of things. And so um, I think it was my sophomore or junior year, sophomore year was when I finally de- declared my major as environmental studies. And um, from there on, I started applying to internships and working with, um, oh my gosh, the environmental studies program um, at Chaminade, and they really helped me um, with um, getting into learning how to do research at, at, at that stage. Wow. And, and what makes it so special? What, what was it that you fell in love with when it comes to environmental studies? Um, I think the first thing, the fir- the one class that I took, I think it was ecology, and that was um, like under the um, environmental studies um, catalog or whatever, and um, we learned a lot about um, natural medicine, ethnobotany. So, um, and I was like, oh my gosh, we do a lot of this back home. Like we uh, live, our ancestors like lived off of medical, uh, local medicines and whatnot. But here I am also thinking about going into hard head sciences, like just medicine, not dealing with um, local medicine. And so um, I just decided I wanted to continue on learning about plants and chemicals and um, how this, like there's this kind of a bridge between local medicine and um, the Western and Western medicine. Wow. And you're right. Uh, I mean, you talk about uh, local medicine. I mean, throughout Micronesia, every island has their own local remedy. And yes. you know, so that, that's awesome that you kind of went that way. And, you know, it's, it's not that I said, I think one of the cool thing 
I like about this this generation of Micronesians, Micronesian students is they're, of course, back in the day, I'm saying back in the day, like I'm that old, I'm not even old, but you know, <laughs> back, way back, like 40 years ago, Micronesian students were going to, to just probably like top 10 things, like a doctor, a uh, lawyer, you know, they were aiming for specific things. Whereas nowadays yeah. you see students kind of diverting and finding other ways and, and it's awesome to see when it comes to the environment, the environmental side, there's a lot of you guys. There's you, there's Carol Ann, there's Nikki Amase. Like, oh, my God, uh, you guys are, have literally changed the game and really changed the, the way Micronesian students are, are picking their majors and, and, and what they want to um, pursue. Yeah, um, and it's good that you say that. So, yes, and another, I forgot to say this, but another influencing factor of what I wanted to major in was learning about climate change and, you know, just seeing really firsthand back home how um, climate change is real and really happening in real real time. So um, that was really another influencing factor in determining, like, going into learning about environmental studies and natural resources, uh, conservation biology, and um, yeah. Wow. And yeah. I, I do agree with you, sorry. I, I agree with you with the new generation, like going off and learning about a different like subjects. And like, I am all for that. I love, I, re I really like that. I love um, going in, not like make, making your own footprints and not really going with whatever people want, think you should go for. Harmony, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. When we come back, we're going to talk about your PhD journey. Wow. <laughs> talk about the, you know, how you went from Hawaii and then pursued your education and then boom, graduated and now can finally call you Dr. Harmony Omai. We'll talk about that coming up. You're watching the One Mike Ninja podcast. We're brought to you by Dokomo Pacific. It is better together. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Hoppity, Mogithin, and we're back here. One Mike News Podcast. Wow, what a journey so far. We've talked about how it all started for her in Chuk, then in Hawaii, and then she graduated Chaminade. But then she didn't stop there. She was like, you know what? I'm going to keep going. <laughs> BA, not enough. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to go get that PhD, and she did. So let's talk about that journey. Harmony again, thank you so much. Um, so what made you want to continue to pursue for your doctorate? Um, uh, I've actually always known that I wanted to pers like go on to um, a graduate school but um, I think it was my junior year was uh, or senior my last year in college when it like hit me what am I going to do next I don't I haven't really started looking at schools or jobs and I w it was just like I was so scared that <laughs> that was the end for me so I started um talking to um, all of professors at the Chaminade University. I took this career development class that was required. And I was also part of this Hogan entrepreneurship at, at the university. And I, I, there I tried to like learn what, how can I use my degree to um, do something that I, I, I want to do. And I started networking and then I, I realized after volunteering in labs and doing internships that I actually wanted to just pursue research. But the problem at that time was I didn't know what type of research I wanted to do. Um, and I, again, did a lot of digging. I just 
really talked to a lot of people. I visited a lot of professors. I observed a lot of labs. I sent a lot of emails to different people. And people, professors were so nice to be like, oh, yeah, you can, here's what you can do. This is what you can do with that. You can intern with us or whatnot. And um, after I, my junior year, I did a, a um, undergraduate research opportunity in Costa Rica. And I did um, research then at that time, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to do research. I want to go out in the field and be a field biologist. Like, this is the kind of stuff I want to do. I want to travel. I want to work in the field, then come to the office and work and also work in a lab and not just, do, and not just be confined, confined to one space every single day, like constantly moving because I like to just be moving around and doing things. After I did this internship in Costa Rica, I, I um, went to, um, I think it was LA for a, a conference to, pre to present the research that I did in Costa Rica. And I was walking around like this exhibition hall and I saw a lot of graduate, um, graduate school applications. So I was like, my, so this is something that I can do since I like research, I can go and pursue like maybe a master's or um, then I, just collected like I think I had like 20 or 30 at graduate school applications I went back to Hawaii I sat in the library and I just applied to every single one of them um, I think in total I applied to 12 programs at 10 universities and um, after getting into uh, getting interviewed and like weeding through the pros and cons and uh, going to different universities Tennessee came out top of the list and I chose to go to, and I chose Tennessee, wow. the University of Tennessee. That's awesome. And, you know, before, remember, we we're talking about how, how the norms have changed now, where, where students are, are venturing into things, in, into finding their own, uh, their love for other uh, fields and stuff. And I think what you're doing as well is another, you guys are breaking the norm of not just stopping at BA. You know, not just stopping at your master's. I mean, think mass back, you know, like I said, not that I'm old, 40 years ago, <laughs> master's was like the doctor's, not like master's I mean, is like getting still, a PhD. Is still a, and, I mean, it still. is good. Yes, I know. It's, I mean, people are pursuing, but it, they're really breaking that norm. And, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on here to kind of really open the eyes of, uh, of, of young Micronesians who are still in high school right now to, to, to let them know that, hey, man, it is a hard journey. That's for sure. You know, Lots going to happen in your life, but, you know, like to not only stop it. I mean, bachelor's is, oh, my God, bachelor's, even bachelor's is amazing. Right. But to, to actually take go all the way to finish and get that Ph.D., I think that that's the new norm now. And you guys are definitely showing that. And wow, it's, it's amazing to see that it, it, it's actually happening. And you're a great example of, of that. So getting your Ph.D. is different from getting your a bachelor's or a medical degree. It's not going to school, taking classes, passing these classes and getting a diploma. It's, it's about creating things that people haven't created before. You, you, don't, you do take classes and you have to pass these classes, but it's about what you create, the research that you create. So that whole research of um, designing and analyzing and publishing these, you have to do three different uh, research doing all of these three different research is your, your dissertation. So that is, I, I did all of that. And yours was uh, the, uh, you, the evolution of uh, the reproductive traits of plants on the islands. Talk about why, what, why you went, why, why, why you picked that? Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, when I, I went to school and this is another thing. So when I went to graduate school, I was so scared because I thought that I needed to know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but when I got there, I know, realized that the rest of the people in my cohort, there were 18 of us, um, really were on the same boat as me. We didn't really know what we we're doing, but we knew we liked research. So the whole first year of your PhD is figuring out what you want to do. And um, I knew I wanted to um, work with plants because I've, I've already done that in Costa Rica. And I, I knew I didn't want to do marine plants because I didn't want to work in the ocean. So I stuck with terrestrial plants. And um, 
one of the big things in science, in re research in science or research in general is filling in the gaps. And when reading about different things or um, plant evolution in general, you have so many different um, information or published work on, on this topic. But there's a, a wide, wide, wide gap in um, evolution of, of plants on islands. But there's even a wider gap on evolution of plants on, in Pacific islands or in Micronesian islands. So I was like, this is a gold mine. I can do my research. And I, I have so many avenues that I can go down in and um, pursue this. And so I reached out to um, a, um, a couple of professors. Oh my gosh, no, I feel bad. I don't remember their names. But um, that um, had worked in Micronesia, uh, that had worked in um, Palau before, and they, you know, helped me figure out um, what were the biggest gaps that I could explore and what the chances of getting data for these things are. And that's how I got in. But what would Harmony want? What's something that you're maybe in the future? That's what that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm working towards. Yeah, so I really want to um, um, do 100% research and I want to have my, oh my gosh, this is far reaching, but I want to, I, one of the goals that I, I write in a lot of my, in my, um, in the cover letters that I've been writing is to do a lot of outreach with uh, young Micronesians. And so I, I try to, um, with postdocs that I apply to, I'm trying to get funds to, um, be able to actually go to Micronesia to different islands and maybe teach a summer course or um, be a guest lecturer at, at, at some point. But I, I, that's, I, I want to introduce research and kind of show um, not just kids, but like everybody that there's so many avenues, research avenues that you can go, go down on in Micronesia. You don't necessarily need to get out or go out and go into a PhD to do research, you can really just do it for fun and try and figure out if you like it or not. And so in growing up in Micronesia, like I think one thing that I really struggled with was in Micronesia, I didn't really see a lot of um, career opportunities. I thought that careers were just like, go be a doctor, go be a businessman or a politician or um, a lawyer. But um, I want to, one thing that I want to bring to Micronesia is that there's another, there's, there are so many other things outside of, of um, the norm. Mm -hmm. And um, research in FSM is a big, big gap that needs to be filled. That's not, yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, right. We, we tend to forget, you talk about lawyer, doctors, which is amazing. We need a lot of those, right? But then yes. we need to study our own our own islands, you know, get to know our plants, get to know um, get to know the, the ocean. And these are things that uh, that we tend to forget that, you know, if we learn about it, we can actually help our environments more that way. Yeah. All right. Well, Harmony, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to close out the interview with a message and last comment. So we'll be back with that. Uh, you're watching the One Micronesia Podcast. and brought to you by Dokomo Pacific. It is better together. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition. And step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific. Better together. Building on the past, we at Docomo Pacific Business believe in helping businesses move forward and together, changing the way we get things done to make you and your company reach your highest potential. Trust in our commitment to bring you the best solutions for all your business goals. We are Docomo Pacific Business. Let's work better together. Hafari, Mogithin, and Rananya. We're back here with the last part of the podcast. Last messages, last comments. So, 
Dr. Harmony Yomai, the talk has been inspiring to, to learn your journey from Chuk to Hawaii to Tennessee and now in Vegas. Just chill, ch chin chilling. All right. Just relaxing for a little bit before you get back to the big work. Um, a lot of a, a lot of young microgenes watching the podcast right now. They feel inspired. What message would you have for them? Hard work and perseverance is the key to finishing. Honestly, it's, pursuing a PhD is not an easy journey. It's it's a lot of um, struggle. It's a lot of stress, not only um, for your from your workload, but it it takes a huge toll on your mental health. So you have to really take into consideration that you have to be mentally strong, physically strong, and uh, well, I guess not necessarily physically strong, but you have to really prepare yourself mentally to go pursue a, a PhD and don't ever, don't, don't give up. It, there's, it will, it will, you'll, you will finish, you will finish, just keep on going. Take care of yourself, take care of your mental health and don't give up. Amen. All right. So Harmony, again, thank you so much for the time. Uh, last comments before I let you go. Um, just thank you so much again for having me. Thank you to all the Micronesians who've uh, shown so much support and love on, on in, um, Instagram and all over Facebook. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you all. All right. Well, there you have it. Dr. Harmony Omai, again, congratulations. Uh, you know, take all the break you need and then, you know, go get, go get, I'm pretty sure you right after you're ready, you feel like you're ready, you're going to get back to work. So uh, Harmony, thank you so much for, uh, you know, chit chatting with me uh, and, uh, and telling us about your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. All right. Well, that pretty much includes another episode of the One Micronesia podcast. My name is Victorious and I just got to say peace. <laughs> The One Micronesia Podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.